Well, that happened. Somewhat pointless, but there we are. That's the intro, apparently, to this one versus one between Forest in blue or violet or purple. I can't see from this far away, but as soon as the commanders land, I'll be able to determine it. And Zyke in yellow. Both of these players really high up on the ladder. I believe both probably have uh, uber ranks now, because, of course, the... Uh, the matchmaking and ranked systems now are fully functional. Just having a look around this planet before we uh, before the commander spawn in. Well, it's too late. They just have. It's a big metal planet. There's lots of metal points everywhere. There's going to be choke points and all that jazz. So let's uh, put up a picture in picture here, just so we can keep an eye on uh, everything that's going on between these players. And I'll uh, put up a command ca command camera anchor as well. There is uh, Zyke. And there is Forest. So, looking at Forest there in the uh, in the blue there, definitely with the Theta Commander. He's gone for vehicles first, interesting choice given the size of the planet. Might have advised uh, going docks first in this particular planet and then 1-1 one, one with air followed up as well. That's actually um, sort of gives the explanation for the vehicles. Meanwhile, down as Zyke, he's gone for air first. 1-1 one, one, followed by an S second and lots of PGENs. That's a lot of PGENs and a radar as well over there. You want to get the radars up as well. A ASAP. And that's, that's a big uh, area command. But uh, looking at what these players can actually do, they'll want to be getting out scouts as soon as possible. A few fabricators coming out there from Forest. He's going to try and get up as much metal as he can before the engagements start going around. And you've got a, a Firefly here just happening to go straight towards Forest Space. Let's see where exactly he's been uh, been told to go. And in fact, he's just been told to sit there. Is he being given another waypoint? Uh, someone's been given a, a global area patrol. Unfortunately, he doesn't get it and goes the wrong way. Oh, that's important. Doesn't get the scout off. That's really quite crucial. However, looking around Forest, we don't see him getting any scouts out at this point in time. There's an interceptor to scout. That's always a good idea. And there's the scout from Zyke. He finally gets an idea of where the opponent's base is. He wants to try and move it away from that spinner there. Just because uh, it's come out and uh, it's going to pro provide a little bit of early anti-air for his expanding fabricators. The, uh, meanwhile, the expanding interceptor hasn't quite got the same amount of vision range, but it's heading in roughly the right direction. Let's have a look at what Zyke can see as he just begins to head over the base now. Hmm, we can see through the planet there, interestingly. And does he get the scout? The answer is yes, he does. And he takes out an f -Abber as well. That's that's important as well. That's a good, uh, good kill there from that interceptor. Taking out the build power, that mechs is not going to go up. And this is where the problem with going air fabricators on a large map is, because especially if your opponent is likely to go air. Let's have a look at what Zyke's managed to see. He's managed to see the air factories as well. He should have perhaps uh, realized that air, air fabricators a risky strategy on this sort of a map, but uh, unfortunately didn't pay off for him. Because, of course, you can send them off in all sorts of different directions and they can expand pretty rapidly as well because of that movement speed, like getting up the uh, radars in the trenches there is a good idea. Um, but if they are found by an interceptor, they're pretty much gone. Now, uh, that Firefly has landed on the floor. I think interceptors can now shoot at uh, landed, uh, landed aircraft. But uh, that's not the problem for this Firefly. This here is. That's a good number of interceptors, a good number of spinners as well. That's a really good defensive and expanding force. Or the uh, the expanding Fabertrain. Some might prefer to call it. And going for a really early advanced vehicles. That's really interesting from, uh, from Forest there. Perhaps he's going to start using teleporters to shift his units around the map a lot faster. Because that's still quite a sizable gap between the bases. I mean, if we look at zoom out here and look at how fast those docks are moving towards each other. That's really progressing quite slowly. Because, uh, you know, they're only little tiny little critters. If we zoom in even further, you can see quite how tiny is tiny. Yeah. That's, that's quite tiny. As we zoom out again, you can just see they're like ants. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, no. Ants are tanks. Ants are these things. And if you notice that I'm trying to drill the word ant into your mind at the moment, that's because, you know, I'm a very avid supporter of the ant. That's that's what's going to happen. So, zooming around, getting back into the game there. Another fabricator about to be picked off by an interceptor. Really good uh, work with all the interceptors going around there from uh, from Forest. It's probably the area patrol of all of those interceptors going around, taking out all of those uh, air fabricators. In fact, there's only one remaining. 
Uh, but uh, Zyke forced to transition to uh, bot fenders there. And as soon as he sees the vehicles heading his way, I suspect he's going to want to transition to vehicles himself because lots of bot factories is all well and good. But as we saw in the previous game, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out in my playlist between uh, Captain Conundrum and Battle Bear. The uh, pre rematch, I believe I've called it. Uh, you know, tanks were a lot better than docks, especially if in equal numbers. A few docks now approaching the uh, the mechs. This one going to try and defend as best he can. He wasn't micro though. A few interceptors coming in. No bumblebees, however, to support as of yet. Do we see any as we move back further out? No, we do not. But a uh, number of docks here just going to keep streaming in as they're produced and just rallied across the map there. And the advanced vehicle factory almost complete. But the important thing is that here these mechs are going to go down. Psyche, however, floating mechs equal the players. The players are, excuse me, they're 141 apiece. That's going to change any second now as this one goes down. Might see another one go up here in a second to counterbalance that one. But at the same time, Forest is expanding unhindered. <coughs> excuse me. With his expanding fabric train here, I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing a few factories going up in uh, in those sort of expanding locations, just because uh, having multiple bases is always better than one. The larger your base covers, the harder it is to find your commander, or at least infer his location. Good radar going up there instead of the max. That's an interesting one, just to keep an eye on the surrounding area there. I'm not sure I can uh, actually see the range of it for you. That's that's deceptive there. But if you probably shift it down, it's probably about as far as it goes. This really would be helpful for spectators if we could see things like that uh, by clicking on them or hovering over them, etc. But uh, currently, spectators are basically just players who can't touch anything, who just happen to be looking from uh, from a godly perspective. But a few more docks being uh, destroyed there by Forest. A small uh, sort of flanking maneuver here going on. That's a little force beginning to gather, but again, the vehicles are just about to arrive there. Interceptor there getting a scout off on one of those tanks. Unfortunately, I think Zyke realizes, hmm, I've got to transition to vehicles. However, he's going for advanced bots. Really early advanced tiers going on. Has he scouted the advanced vehicles? That's the clincher. He has not. And he hasn't been able to scout uh, the advanced eco or anything like that. And Forrest is now going to start steamrolling ahead until Zyke can catch up with his own bot factory. But Zyke there, not Zyke, sorry, Forrest, doing a really good um, strategy and realizing, hmm, this planet is pretty damn big. I can probably risk getting up a T2 rush before he can get any sizable forces to me. And boy, has it paid off in this instance. He's got his T2 ready, and he's actually keeping the tug of war mainly in Zyke's zone. It's only this recent clump here that's actually beginning to uh, push Forest's forces back. And what Forest really needs to do now is begin to maybe clump these units up a little bit rather than sending in them to then sending them in two by two. It's not particularly advised. But a small raiding force going on down here. Raiding, I mean scouting. There's no bumblebees in there. Perhaps Zyke might wish to uh, to go for a few bumblebees there, and it looked like. Uh, Perhaps that was an error patrol. I don't even know what that sort of formation was, but it looks pretty, and that's what's important. So we got a few interceptors here, not managing to take out the air fabricator. That air fabricator lives to die another day, but there are still a few interceptors going around from Forest, so it's not safe. It's not home and dry just yet, but uh, lots of expansion going on. We're up to 219 mechs for Zyke and only 260. I say only, I didn't really mean that. I meant quite a bit more because, of course, of this advanced eco here, and that's the important bit. Now he can get up to just so many factories very, very rapidly as well. And I do believe that Zyke managed to uh, scout the advance there. He would have seen the uh, the advanced fabricators if he was paying attention to that scout. It's debatable as to whether he was, because he might have been microing units around the middle. In fact, that was probably more than likely what was going on. But uh, still, the advanced PGENs and the advanced mechs are really going to help uh, Forest here, as he just has the ability now to spam up these bot factories like there's no tomorrow. And now his uh, factory count and unit count will just start to rocket ahead until Zyke can begin to catch up with his own advanced bots, which aren't yet complete. That's, uh, that could be something of an issue there for him, but he is getting a lot of fabricators of his own onto these bot factories, so uh, even so, that's a lot of stuff he's putting in there. Unit count relatively okay, given the size of the map, 67 to 96, so uh, Zyke's still in the lead on that front, but uh, we do have shellers coming out now, and that's going to be the issue for these docks, because the shellers with their area of effect, that could be really, really problematic for Zyke. 
And he's probably going to try and move away from that. However, they are completely vulnerable to bumblebees. Ouch! A lot go down there. The unit leading, unit tracking, all that jazz. But uh, as we approach uh, 11 minutes here, that T2 is, is really quite interesting to see it come out so early and now Zyke has his own advanced factory complete he could use his commander to uh, assist out those fabricators you don't want to lose your use your leave your commander idle for too long especially not uh, at any point like this landed interceptors up there the uh, the ants however moving in the opposite direction and a few uh, scouting and raiding docks over here however they do get taken down by bumblebees over time uh, unit tracking and stuff, and I don't think Zyke is necessarily paying attention to these. I think perhaps he's beginning to micro them. However, they uh, they do go both go down there. So no more max harass from that side on Zyke's part. But uh, looking over, we do have a little flanking force of docks moving out there. So perhaps that's what all of these factories are doing. They're just going to keep producing docks to go around and flank. And then finally, we're getting up the advanced eco from Zyke as well. A little bit of a slow beginning, but then again, that's. Um, granted from a sizable map like this one and a few bits of anti-air as well around there the advanced defab is still alive though still expanding which is always good 429 mechs plays 373 so the gap is widening but uh, it shouldn't be uh, too hard for Zyke now to catch up given the number of mechs points he actually has claimed over the map because uh, Zyke does still have all of this stuff down here though but not Zyke, sorry, Fores. Zyke, however, has the uh, the teleporter down here and a proxy base. Now, this is definitely what I would call a proxy, although uh, probably not given... No, this is definitely a staging point rather than a proxy or even a, an alternate base. An alt, if you will. Because, uh, well, there's... I think that might be my phone. Um, there's just <laughs> look at the the distance between this main base here of Zyke and the main of Forest, and compare that distance to the alt and uh, and Forest there. It's pretty much equal, and that's uh, what I'm basing my decision to go with alt. Anyway, why on earth I went off on a big rambling about what I have decided to call a small little pitney base like that? I'll keep uh, an eye on it in picture in picture though, just to make uh, keep track of its progress down there, because that could be quite important. We do have Zyke, however, pushing out. Uh, I keep getting these colours wrong around. Fores pushing out, so uh, managing to make a little bit of headway now, finally, with his tug of war, because those uh, shellers are beginning to support him. Though Zyke does have bumblebees now, and quite a sizable amount of them, and that's a lot of vehicle factories. Unfortunately, it looks as though the fabricators might have been taken down, or indeed uh, pulled off, in fact, to go to orbital. Now, that's definitely interesting. But all of those vehicle factories could be put to use, however, he doesn't appear to have the economy to support at the moment. He does need to get up some P gens, and I certainly hope that's what he's doing. Indeed, that is exactly what he's doing there with all of those fabricators, and indeed getting an advanced radar as well. Not necessarily required, given the fact that he has radar coverage in pretty much a, a locus around where that advanced radar is going to be. Um, so, I mean, I guess it'll cover this area here, which is uh, in a radar blind spot. But uh, it won't be for too much longer. However, he does need the energy to support it. And at this point, he doesn't. And ideally, he really wants to get up that advanced P-Gen to, uh, to keep that. However, Fores keeping on piling on the pressure. That's a lot of uh, a lot of units trawling in there. And a few shellers as well. They're going to be a real problem for these docks. Especially if they keep walking into those sheller fire. The artillery there. But lots and lots of bumblebees number of interceptors coming around from Forest, however, desperately trying to uh, pick away at these bumblebees. However, that's quite a sizable number of bumblebees. I'm sniffing a commander snipe in the air. Gosh. It's, it's definitely an aroma which is more than plausibly identifiable. However, the orbital is now complete from Zyke going up with a fabricator first, so we might even see some reclaiming and or... Um, what do you call them? Anchors in orbit above Fora space. Inus might uh, might go for a bit more in terms of orbital before playing so aggressively, simply because with the advanced uh, advanced units and advanced fabricators within Zyke's base, it'll be way way too easy to get up an umbrella stupidly fast compared to the rate at which you'll be able to build the. Um, Yankers. However, a few interceptors now are coming in on the main front. Going to take out a lot of bumblebees here. There are a number of interceptors from uh, from Zyke, but it looks as though all of those in, uh, bumblebees there have just been taken down by that single small force of interceptors just finding a hole and 
pulling it through, taking down all of that and getting off a good bit of scouting as well, seeing all of those factories. Let's just have a look at what Forrest just managed to see. Pretty much everything that is of importance. He saw the advanced, he saw the radar, all of this jazz. And he's getting off sort of continual scouts here with all of these. Uh, and then there, there's the scout in the orbital. He's probably going to want to put up a couple of umbrellas as a result of that. Is he going to do so? Let's keep an eye on what he's doing there. He's definitely responding to it. An umbrella goes up, as does a deep space radar. It's definitely one you want to do if you see an orbital going up, just so you can uh, keep track of it. But uh, Zyke here doing what uh, what I would probably advise in a situation like this and playing very defensively in the orbital there. Just going to advance and uh, support this sort of main tug of war lane here which is uh, quite important. We do actually have units coming through here. The teleporter isn't yet activated, but of course the energy can't really support that. But a lot of factories here taking out a few of uh, Forest's expansions. He could be moving around a bit of scouting going on as well from Forest. He's not diverting any units down to it though. Perhaps he doesn't perceive it as uh, such a great threat at this point. But uh, perhaps he really needs to begin to as his mechs is raided there. Despite the advanced uh, and the time advantage with regards to the advanced eco going up, the economies aren't actually too far apart. Only 618 plays 580. That's, that's not particularly far apart. And uh, I fear for, uh, for Forest. Um, resolve here with regards to how he's going to deal with that uh, expansion rating. However, we do have the slammers moving in now. And this is going to really bolster the forces against these docks. Slammers versus docks is like daddy versus son. -y. Um, ignore I ever said that. But you get my point. It's big brother versus little brother. Uh, of course, Big Brother tends to win in those sort of situations, especially if the little brother can't come crawling back to the parents going, My big brother did this to me! Unfortunately, the big brother uh, is going to have to meet that sort of a situation here because there is the rest of the base. However, that's a substantial force. And there was me thinking I took off all the... Um the clashes with my uh, key bindings, but hey-ho. But again... As I was saying, he's got the main base there, but there's not actually all that many units defending it. Of course, as uh, the more astute of you will probably realize, we're nowhere near the end of the replay yet, so this will probably get taken down. However, the more important thing is how much damage it's going to do. Unfortunately, it's not really breaking too far into the base because there's just too many bumblebees there defending it. If we zoom out again, I did see a fair bit of uh, air forces going on in the distance there. Lots of interceptors as well. Really nice to see that. Uh, and of course the defensive orbital play here probably really doing a lot of work taking out those docks they're really nice probably a couple more anchors wouldn't uh, wouldn't go amiss although the eco is really trembling look at that 48 percent efficiency really not brilliant at all and uh, oh boy that's a lot of bumblebees that's going to take out a fair bit of expansion if they really want to. Do they want to be seen is the next question. A few of them have been injured though, so they have obviously been uh, witnessed in f battle before, taking out a few uh, few mechs expansions here. And in fact, they just diverted, so that's a really good uh, use of the great numbers there, going able to take off all of those. However, we do see the air forces mobilized in the distance there. Let's keep an eye on those to see where exactly they're going. Is it going to be raiding and counter-raiding? It certainly looks like it. Except there's only one bumblebee, not one, sorry, but only a small number in that group compared to the entire composition of the other. But it looks as though uh, they are getting chased down by interceptors there, so Zyke doing a good job of defending and scrambling reinforcements just to take out all of these sort of things. Meanwhile, back on the main tug of war now, Forest dominating on this front. Lots and lots of advance. That's a really scary push there from uh, from Forest. Lots of shellers followed up with lots of tanks and even more shellers and slammers as well. Followed up with even more tanks. Followed up with even more tanks. That is ugly. That is really really ugly for Zyke. If we go into the army tab, there, 53 factories place 50. But, again, like in previous games, the majority of Zyke's are bot factories and air factories. And bot worked factories, when you've got equal and more count from forest in vehicle factories, is not exactly what you want, and that's really going to cause an issue for Zyke in this game. We uh, just follow these units as they move in. They're just going to be able to take down all these reinforcements that uh, Zyke is trying to pull around. And uh, the interceptors there putting on a little bit of a display for us as the bumblebees slowly catch up there, putting on a almost sort of, you know, some red arrows display there, except they're not exactly red, they're yellow. But hey ho, I digress. These anchors, though, doing a really good bit of work there against these forces that keep pushing in. He definitely needs to put in a few more anchors. 
and uh, lots of um, Avengers there as well as uh, Ferris himself has finally moved into the orbital air, putting up uh, three orbital launchers there. Looking back in the economy tab, he does have the energy to support it, and that's a lot of bumblebees there as well, going to defend against this, but the commander's right there, and uh, he can just pop up a few uh, uber cannons to deal with that. But the spinners in that group, though, doing a really good bit of defense against any defensives uh, there. But the Uber Cannon does go off, taking out a good number of them. Commander do is losing a little bit of health in the orbital launcher here as well, coming under fire. But it is going to survive as a second volley of uh, bombs coming off there, rather than a volley sort of round. But that's a lot of bumblebees. That really is a lot. That's a commander snipe amount of bumblebees, really. To be, to be perfectly honest, and it looks as though he might even be considering going and taking down this uh, this alt uh, with those forces. The spinner there being a little bit pesky, and I think it might have taken out one bumblebee, but uh, that remains to be seen. But certainly, looking in Zyke's base here, the commander realizing ah, it's too much air. I'm going to put up lots and lots of AA around my base. Although looking around the base, actually, there's really not a huge amount of AA going on. But he has transitioned to majority interceptors there, hummingbirds from the air factories, which is the best response when you see quite so many bumblebees as uh, Forrest has got there. That's exactly what he wants to be doing. He doesn't want to be having uh, bumblebees fighting bumblebees because, of course, that doesn't exactly work. Unless, of course, you are a skilled pilot and manage to drop bombs on another plane while in flight. At which point, you deserve a badass badge of badassitude. Ugh, blimey, I won't ever say that again either. That really was dodgy. But... There, the bumblebees getting taken out entirely as they run straight into that force of interceptors. What was Ferris thinking as he sacrifices all of those? Probably just saying, hey, look at my bumblebees. I got bumblebees. Have you got bumblebees? I think not. But Zyke can sort of slap that remark in the face and say, ha, you got bumblebees. I've got hummingbirds, bro. And completely denying, denying uh, Ferris that uh, line of attack. But he's persistent. He's got a number out there as well. 20, 20 moving on uh, down to the south. And uh, lots and lots of vehicles continuing to push, though. However, Zyke is managing to claw a bit of land back on the uh, the main tug of war front here. As he's pushing out with a few slammers. And they are going to meet even more slammers, and uh, it's not exactly going to be the best. But he will be able to push in a little bit more as the bumblebees do come in to defend against those slammers. So just keeping his forces alive, bolstering them a little bit. Just a little bit and as much as he possibly can. Lots of interceptors coming in! Oh my goodness, they're all just going to get taken down to the spinners there. Why uh, fly those uh, interceptors straight over everything else? I'm not entirely sure. But lots of orbital defences going up around uh, Zyke's commander as well. Perhaps he needs to get up some flak. Uh, is certainly what I would advise given the number of bumblebees because flak of course do area of effect they are much much better at killing uh, swarm their units but, uh, looking around though the advanced fabricators there's only a couple of them and they're going for the eco rather than anything else because of course the mechs is stalling in both of these player scenarios in fact uh, Forest actually has managed to pull quite a way away with the metal income. In fact, he's gone up to 864 to 643, but the energy is pretty much relatively equal. But all those bumblebees now beginning to take down all of this uh, mechs expansion. Just what uh, Zyke needs at this point, but what Forest does not want. Or faux rest or whatever. Anyway, but the commander's right there. We could see a little bit of damage going. It's not enough to uh, to snipe the commander because there's so many spinners there. Not too many interceptors from uh, from faux rest, but they do come in there, do uh, fill up the count, and the bumblebees do get taken down. So that air force is going to get entirely swamped and destroyed. That was a really big loss for Zyke because now his entire air force, be it defensive or aggressive, has just been taken down and oh my giddy goodness gracious me, this is what you call a lot of bombers. That's a really large number of bombers and we're just going to follow them up here as they come and you can monitor it on the picture in picture as well. That's the big blue blob just begins to hover over the base and obliterate everything it flies over. It finds the commander and he is not long for this world as he is taken down instantly. Oh wow, that was a lot of bumblebees. And of course, Zyke moving all of his air, air forces out of his base and actually getting them uh, 
into a suicide scenario is probably what lost that for him because otherwise he would have been able to defend against that easily because there were no interceptors in that unit composition whatsoever if we go back again just to see that no interceptors in there whatsoever there's probably about a hundred bumblebees in that group <laughs> there's no way he was going to survive that if he didn't have any air support but uh, it did come in a little bit too late unfortunately let's have one last look and see uh, see what Zyke could see from his radar perspective. In fact, he wouldn't be able to necessarily because of the um, because of the energy deficit he was in and in fact his advanced radar looks as though it had been taken down but he sees them all there and he's probably just thinking oh dear probably need a change of underwear after that encounter and down he goes. Anyway, that's all me uh, all done for this video, folks. Don't forget to pop a like if you liked it or a dislike if you disliked it. And don't forget to tell me why if you disliked it. And also, please subscribe and share the video as well because there's more PA on the way very, very soon indeed. Anyway, I'm all done. So, thanks again for watching, folks. And as always, have a nice day. For Captain Conundrum as he's really starting to lose all of his economy there. So many mechs and a few P-Gens as well taken down. That's really big losses for Captain and a few big wins there for uh, Battle Bear. Because now if you look in the economy tab, 51 metal plays, 113. Really not advised. The commander on the front lines over here having to put off an Uber Cannon. I did hear that there. In fact, it looks as though he's having to move out with his commander. Let's keep an eye on the uh, front, the flank there as that force just continues to tear through the base, but this commander is, uh, is going Rambo, seeing if he can get a few wins on his own. Going in with a few boombots there as well, I didn't see those going out, and the commanders are right there actually, those boombots could really have done a lot more damage to that uh, to that commander there, I think it's the Gamma commander rather than the Duds commander, I think that's still a, a little bit of an, an error in the labelling, and down he goes.